Yeah. Yeah. So, here, let me see if this bad boy will move. Um, I was going to an exam room. It's okay. This, this is good. This uh, is this better? Yes. Perfect. Hi. How are you today? <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on? boyfriend situation, but we're both on the lease. Okay. But he, uh, he's been exhibiting more and more uh, intermittent explosive episodes. Okay. He has not struck me, but he is extremely, ver very verbally volatile and uh, slamming doors throwing things around. My cane hit me today on my elbow. Um, you know, just on and on and on and just berating me and berating me. And just constant, constant, constant. And it, it, it drove my blood pressure up. And that's why I'm here. That's understandable. Can we start off with your birthday? April 16, 1957. How do you say your last name? Weird, W. Okay. And uh, what's a good phone number for you? 719. Okay. 569. 7214. Sorry, I haven't heard this headache. It's hard to think. That's okay. What's your address? 1421 East Evans Avenue, apartment A. What's his name? Adam Lewis. Adam Charles Lewis. What's his birthday? If you don't know, how about how old is he? No, I do. December 5th, 1972. 05 of 72. Do you know his phone number? 711-406-6606 is the cell phone. Okay, and he lives at the same address? How long have you guys been in a relationship? Not that long, since like last uh, November. Okay. And actually I didn't know that he had uh, explosive episodes until we moved in in, in June. And I knew I was stuck because we signed a 12 month lease. In June? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I moved in. He moved in the first of June. Mm -hmm. I didn't come until the very end of June. Okay. Is that when things changed? That's when, during the move of helping me move, I realized um, that he could be extremely verbally volatile. Okay. What would you say or do? <coughs> well. All kinds of things. I mean, just, you know, um, what happened today was that my granddaughter, who's two, ended up out in the street. I happened to be on the phone. She was playing out on the porch with the neighbor girl. They were playing close to my front door, and the call came in. I told him I, I was on a business call. He went into the kitchen. He, he absolutely refused to take any kind of responsibility for helping me with the baby. And then he goes out and sees that she's almost in the street. He came back and he he never stopped. I was a piece of shit because I couldn't see and I can't walk and I can't take care of a baby. I shouldn't have the baby. On and on and on and on and on and on and on. And he he's he's not responsible. He's never going to be responsible. And you know, uh, he just kept going. It didn't matter what came out of his mouth. He just kept going. He slammed doors, coming and going. But that wasn't the thing that really set him off. He was, he was angry when he got up this morning. He was, on, he was going off like that on the phone with the lady at FedEx because they refused to bring his package back today. Okay. I mean... Um, uh, a 
and then not only was he going off on me, the little neighbor girl who's four, he was going off on her. Today? Yes. Verbally going off on a four-year-old, telling her that she should have been responsible, watching Sophia, blah, 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 and going on and on and on, and yelling and screaming. But when the cops came today, because other people called, because they heard his, you know, being really loud and, um, you know, he charmed his way out of it. He's really good at that. He believes that if he can put a restraining order against the Pueblo Police Department that you guys won't be able to go out there and arrest him for anything. That makes no sense. Right? Yeah. But of course he knows everything because he was a PI and he knows all that. So it's just on and on. And I just got to a point where my blood pressure was spiking so high and I was lightheaded and I was dizzy and I had the baby and I was overwhelmed and I just didn't, I couldn't go anymore and I just called 911 because I didn't know what else to do. Okay. What else? I got a splitting headache and I feel really bad. <clears throat> what else did he say to you today? Uh, oh, he thinks that yelling and screaming and slamming doors isn't verbal abuse. It's not abusive. Has he threatened you? Not. No, he hasn't threatened me like he's going to kill me or do anything like that. He hasn't struck me. He's just verbally abrasive. And like how? Well, just the yelling and the screaming and telling me I'm a piece of shit and a piece of crap because I let my granddaughter end up out in the street. I mean, it, it, he just doesn't stop. He just keeps going. Whatever comes out. I can't, I can't think straight right now what he said. Normally I can tell you exactly the things that he said. Um, also because we're both on the lease that there's nothing I can do to get him out of there. But he's been escalating. Let me back this up. About a month ago, we were taking the baby home. To, she lives with uh, my ex-daughter-in-law in, -law in um, Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. She's my son's daughter. So, we were taking her home. It was when that really bad thunderstorm was going on. Mm -hmm. And it was just a blanket of rain on the highway. He was in the fast lane. We had a couple of cars off to the side. So he's trying to be in the fast lane to get up around them and go that way. Well, a, a white truck came up behind him and was going faster than he was in the fast lane. Instead of trying to speed up a little bit faster to get over out of the truck's way, he chose to pump his brakes. Been bad. I mean, and and was going off of what a piece of shit the truck driver was, and he wasn't going to play that shit, and don't come up on my bumper and play games with me, and he just kept going on and on with that. So you guys separated now? Yeah, it's a two-bedroom apartment. I told him there's, he, well, then he and my ex star in law over that over that situation with the highway, because I told him what happened. Well, now I'm a piece of shit because I told them, and it's all on me now. It's my fault because I told them, and she got in his face about it. They were yelling and screaming out in front of our apartment building down here in Pueblo, and um, that was really stressful because I was getting yelled at by both of them. And anyway, um, they had every right to know. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't see it that way. He sees it as a betrayal. Yeah. So he never makes any threatening statements to you? Not really. So when, he, but when he's yelling and screaming at you, calling you a piece of shit or whatever he says and slamming doors, how does that make you feel? Uh, not safe, because I don't know what's coming next. I mean, uh -huh. you know, I felt like my life and my, my granddaughter's lives were in jeopardy she today on the highway. And he's having, um, you know, he's having an anger issue with somebody that's driving just a little faster than him on the highway. And I called him on it. Like, what what room is she? She said just 11. Okay. 11, 11, yeah.
I got you. Thank you. So you say you don't feel safe when he yells at you? Well, no. And slamming doors and stuff like that, I don't know what else is coming. And he did throw things today. He threw my, my, my sight cane, and it hit me on the elbow. Hold on. Um, I don't think he was doing it intentionally. He was Threw what? My, I'm blind, so I have a cane. Okay. He, he, he tripped over it. He picked it up, and he just threw it in anger. It, it, it just ended up hitting me. I don't think he was intentionally hitting me. You know what I'm saying? It That's just still really unacceptable. Did. Hitting you white elbow. Huh? In what elbow did it hit you? Right here. I mean, it didn't, didn't cut me or bruise me or anything, so I can't prove it. So did it cause you pain? I'm just saying it's escalating. It's getting worse and then worse and worse. And I just don't want to live like this. So I, I do plan to go to my landlord and tell them. When that cane hit you, did it cause you pain? Yeah, it didn't feel too good. It's a metal cane. So it hurt? Yeah, well, yeah. And I called him on it. You know, and he got my face, and I, he was pointing his finger at me, and I pointed my finger back, but my finger ended up poking his face, you know, accidentally, and and he, and he said, "Oh, now who's assaulting who? That's just as much assault." I said, "Really? Uh, where I stand, you threw the first punch because you hit me with the cane first. So it, it, it. So you said it didn't feel too good, so it hurt, or? Well, yeah, it did hurt. But it didn't leave any marks. The pain went away after a while. It doesn't hurt anymore now. But it How long till the pain went away, would no, you say? I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour. What kind of pain was it? Mm, kind of a sharp pain at first because it hit, you know, it hit the bone really. Okay. I mean, um, so sharp pain in the bone? About what time did you do that? That's a good question. Hmm. Did this take I wasn't looking at a clock and I wasn't um, cognit uh, cognitive at the time. I'm usually really good at that. I'd say somewhere around 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Okay. I ended up taking me and my granddaughter into my bedroom and just secluding ourselves in there. Okay. Just, just not, just so I wouldn't, uh, you know, set him off anymore. But we came back out. We were out in the living room. The cops had come. They talked to him about things, and he comes back in and said, um, uh, started yelling and screaming again, and and, and saying that, uh, yeah, see, I tell you. Didn't do anything wrong. It's like, okay, whatever. And then he started yelling and screaming, and don't, don't you ever lie about anything that I've ever done ever again, blah, 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 about some of the stuff he was saying to me today. And he started going off again, and my blood pressure just went bam. And I, I could barely even sit up. I was sweating from every pore. I was... I was shaking and uh, I, I called my mom because I just knew that my blood pressure was up and, and uh, I didn't want to have a stroke or a heart attack. But I felt like I could have. Is there such a thing as verbal abuse? Well, what we have right now, we have third degree assault. Really? Yeah, because he threw that cane at you and you felt pain. That's third degree assault. Oh. And since you guys... Even though there's no bruise or... You felt pain, and you said you felt pain for 20 to 30 minutes. Oh. I'm going to, I can take a picture of your arm, and it's going to do one of two things. It's going to show... It's going to show your arm the way it is, but even though that there's no bruising and stuff like that, we still take pictures and document things. But okay. what you described to me with him throwing that cane and hitting you, causing you pain, <clears throat> by state statute, that's third degree assault. Okay. And since you, are you guys a, have been in an intimate relationship? 
that's domestic violence. So, so this is what's this is what my plan is. Um, we're gonna let you take you back to your room. I need to go to my car and get some paperwork for you. Um, I'll give you a case report number. Okay. So what's gonna happen? I'm gonna try to go to your apartment and see if I can talk to him, just to get his side of the story. See what he has to say. Okay. So okay. Are you gonna try and do that tonight? Or? Yes, tonight. Okay. Is he at home? Should be. Okay. I'm gonna try to call him. So what's gonna happen? In the state of Colorado, domestic violence is an automatic arrestable offense. Oh. So if I could find him, he's going to go to jail tonight. Okay. Okay. And what's going to end up happening is there's going to be a restraining order placed on him protecting you. Okay. Saying that he can't contact you from phone, text messages, emails, through friends, at work, at home, or anything like that. Okay. He can't come to your place. Even though he lives there? Yes. He's going to have to find a new place. Okay. So, and then... Um, what will end up happening if he does go to jail, he'll, he'll see the judge and he'll post bond or whatever they do. That's kind of the whole court side that yeah. we don't really get too much into, but um, <clears throat> he'll get to come out with that restraining order, and that restraining order will be active like during the whole time of the case that's going on. Not just for seven or ten days? No, it, it should still be active during the whole time that your case is being actively investigated and okay. goes to the DA and goes to court and stuff like that. Um, now, if I can't find him tonight, a warrant will be put out for his arrest. But okay. this is the thing. It could take anywhere from oh. four to six weeks. Oh, yeah. Maybe longer. I know. Okay. So, is there a way you can let me know before I go home that it's going to be safe for me to go home? I can try uh, calling you. Do you still have your phone on you? I don't have a cell phone. No. What, no. what? Oh, they called here. All that I can do is, um, after I contact him, I can try to come back down here and see if you're still here and let you know what I found out. Um, okay. I don't even have the key to the house with me. He has it? He has. I don't know where my key is, but he has a key, yes. Okay. So it's going to be a matter of not locking the house so I can get in. Do you think your key's at home? Yeah, because I came out with just my, what, what I had on, and okay. I, I didn't have my keys in my pocket. What's your key ring look like? Huh? What's your key ring look like that you keep your keys on? I... I think it might be hanging on the knob of my closet door, but I don't know if it's the, the right key or not. Okay. Well, let's see what we can do. We'll let them take you back to your room, and I'll get some paperwork for you. And, then and I'll, your name is? Officer Severson. I'll get you a business Officer card. Officer Stevenson? Severson. Severson. I'll get you a business card, too. All right? Thank you. And so um, we also have this group called ACOVA. Okay. Um, Unfortunately, I'm out of those pamphlets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have a bag? Do I? Yeah. No. All right, so um, I'll see what I can get, but ACOVA is a victim's right advocate group, and so what they are is they can, they're just another resource that you can use. They can give you all sorts of different information about restraining orders and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm not familiar with. Victims assistance, basically. Yeah. And so we could either have them come out and talk to you tonight, or I can get their phone number and give it to you, and you can that call them at it later. Tonight? No. Later? Phone number. Okay. I will uh, go ahead and get that stuff for you, and I'll let the nurses know that you're ready, and then we'll see where we can go from here, okay? okay. All right.